I just realized that I missed a step to create F17 folder uh, under uh, CIT 155 and then place these files uh, in that area. So I'll just do it right now like this. Just uh, create this folder. Additional folder will be F17 and I'll just select my files by pressing shift and arrow down and drag and drop them down into this area. So now we're focusing on the same configuration as this laboratory suggests. So now I can go back to uh, uh, access data FTK imager and add evidence item, select contents of the folder and click next. Uh, so it prompts us to the source path and uh, typically instead of browsing if i already have it in front of me i just prefer to copy it directly from here by pressing ctrl c or just copy and paste uh, into this box and click finish i'd like to collapse unrelated folders and bring this to the top of our view right here so the first uh, question that we need to answer is which panel displays the name of the folder. Of course, this is the evidence tree and most of the forensic tools are using some kind of evidence tree similar to uh, Windows Explorer interface uh, to display uh, the content of your evidence. So here we can say evidence tree. Click View Properties, which items are shown in the Properties pane. Now, um, uh, this is a very uh, important component of FTK Imager. And if uh, for some reason you don't see the Properties panel, you can always click View Properties. It'll be displayed for you. Now, inside here, what you can do, you can just select an item and press Control c to copy the content and be able to paste it um, in your report or any other area. So for example, evidence source path is here or evidence type is also here. So we can copy uh, contents of a folder as evidence type, uh, which is part of what we see in the evidence tree. And I should be able to press Control V to paste it in. Oh, actually it copied the uh, path for me instead of this. So anyway, uh, the properties area is, is very important and very convenient as we move along. Expand the evidence tree and select folder F17. Okay, so this is the full path to folder F17. And you can see that uh, the file list begins to display the content of this folder, which is quite similar to the interface of Windows Explorer. Basically, it's pretty much identical here. It's just that our selection is to display only specific folder content right here. So the columns, of course, include the name, the size, the type, and the date modified. Well, as you fill in this information, name, size, type, and date modified, uh, I strongly suggest that uh, you um, periodically uh, preserve your entries by simply saving them. Click Save Changes. So you, as you'll be working on this form, it may sometimes take uh, more than uh, one day to complete. So you can always preserve your entries so far. Now it's asking us to click on the individual files and examine the file content show, shown in the bottom. Right, so this uh, basically chooses to just display the content of the file in the bottom. So this is an empty file. Um, and also notice uh, right away how uh, uh, the properties window gets filled with all the related information and it shows us the actual file size. Um, the type of item that we're looking at, all the date stamps associated with this, and so forth, including the uh, DOS attributes, hidden system, read-only, and archive attribute. Archive attribute, by the way, 
is associated with every item uh, created uh, on the file system, but not yet being not yet been uh, processed by the backup utility. So the backup utility usually wants to look for files that have these attributes turned on, like the files that we have, which were just created by but never backed up. So backup utility will uh, make a copy of these files and reset it to false. Uh, one more thing to try here is to switch to hex view. Uh, these are the views that are available right here. The hex view is present on the uh, uh, toolbar. And you can see in, in this case, uh, FTK Imager displays the text right here, but also allows us to view individual characters present in this file. So if we had a binary file uh, with all sorts of um, uh, unprintable information, unreadable characters, we could still uh, see the individual characters present in here. By default, if you select uh, specific uh, characters and uh, try to copy them by pressing Ctrl C, it'll copy text, but it's also possible to copy the actual encodings of characters by selecting copy hex. So if I do this, you can see that I can now uh, paste this into my uh, answer right here and you see that instead of copying uh, actual text I am storing um, encodings, ASCII encodings of individual characters. Notice that uh, these encodings are made up of hexadecimal characters such as 54 or 6C. Uh, hexadecimal characters use uh, two hexadecimal digits to encode uh, values and every uh, printable character and every other byte on computer system uh, can be viewed as an actual bit pattern uh, that makes an encoding of that individual character and those uh, bit patterns are typically written as uh, hexadecimal digits and so this is an example of this of this uh, file content uh, spelled out uh, by using ASCII uh, hexadecimal encodings. How many hex codes did you copy? Where would you find an answer to this question in FTK image? For us, it may be very important to know the position of individual character and also know how many characters we select, uh, copy and paste uh, for whatever analysis we're doing. Now, notice that as I click around uh, this area, the bottom part, the status line right here, displays the position of the character. You can also use arrows to navigate to the next character. And as I move my uh, cursor along this uh, line of characters, you see that the cursor position gets adjusted. The first, the offset of the first uh, character is shown as position zero. Not as position one, but as position zero. And typically when we deal with content of files, we use a zero based positioning. So the first character would be at position zero. The second character will be at position one and so forth. And also as we were selecting everything in this file, notice that the status line displays us the length uh, of uh, the actual selection, right? So we have uh, starting position of the selection and the length of that selection. All of this information is pretty important. So this would allow us how many uh, uh, specify how many characters uh, we were uh, copying and uh, what would be uh, the answer here is the uh, status line of this uh, detail view area. I'd let you fill this information in your lab report. When you finished uh, with your lab report, uh, make sure that you check everything and submit for grading. When you submit for grading, it'll ask you to confirm. And uh, when you confirm, um, the, the file will be submitted for grading. And eventually, you'll get an email for, uh, from me uh, confirming uh, my uh, feedback on your work and your grade. 
obviously I'm not submitting this right now just click a back button in my browser and scrolling back to the next question is also asking us here which DOS attributes are shown in the properties panel so you can see that for every file uh, the DOS attributes are these attributes again I'll let you fill in this box uh, on your own as you're doing this lab on your computer 